Althea Boudreaux is suing Alton Wilmington for $2,000 in damages to her scooter and for medical bills after his reckless driving caused her to swerve into a tree and injure herself. It's a case of Scooter on the Run. Alton is countersuing for $2,500 for the repair of his car, which was damaged after he struck another motorist as he tried to avoid the plaintiff on her scooter, a scooter he claims should have not have been on the road. Mediation starts right now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Ms. Boudreaux, good morning. How are you? Well, Miss Scott, I tell you, I've seen better days. The Lord's seen me through better days indeed. Well, <laughs> our days could be better and they could be worse. Yes, they could. It's just a blessing that we're here. Mm -hmm. It uh, is thank a blessing. Thank you for coming to Cajun Court. Yes. Mr. Wimberton, how are you today? I'm fine. You're fine? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, you're moving those papers around. Are uh, you sure you're okay? Yes, ma'am. I'm fine. Let, let's oh, just get to okay. it. Okay. Ms. Boudreaux, let's start with you. You initiated this claim. Mm-hmm. Well, Miss Scott, this young man over here darn near killed me. You know, you almost killed yourself. No, and hold up now. I had to swerve to get out of the way, and I wouldn't be here today. You'd be looking at a ghost if I hadn't swerved out of the way. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, now, Miss Boudreaux, did, did Mr. Wimmerton hit you uh, with his vehicle? Well, he might as well have hit me. I mean, you know, this fool come screaming around the corner like he ain't got no sense. I just, you know, I had to swerve out of the way. And so your complaint says that you ended up uh, driving in into a tree? That is you, correct. That is you correct. hurt your neck and your hip? Hurt my neck, hurt my hip, and tore my scooter up. That's how I get around, you know. Well, you should have been in the car. Uh, just How you know you what I should be doing? That's none of your business. Just a minute, just a minute. Well, Miss Boudreaux, just tell us, tell us what happened. All wait, right. wait, wait. Hold up, hold up. Why should she go first? And she brought me here, and I'm the one to be proven it's guilty. It's gonna be a long yes. day. Let me, let me, let me tell you something, Mr. Wimbledon. Miss Boudreaux here initiated this claim, mm. and when you initiate the claim, then generally you have the opportunity to go first. Yeah. Continue, Miss Boudreaux. Thank you. Thank you. You have your opportunity in just a moment. Well, Miss Scott, like, like I do every morning, I get up about 6.30, I come downstairs, I, I get my coffee, I watch the news and read the newspaper, and then I get on my scooter and go riding around the neighborhood, you know, saying hi to my neighbors, checking on everybody, and everybody knows I ride around there in that scooter. They see me every morning, and they look forward to it, and I look forward to it, too. And so you're on a scooter. Now, yes, ma'am. Is this your only mode of transportation, Ms. Boudreaux? Well, I do have a car, but ever since my husband died, I just don't take it out no more. I got, I got arthritis too bad in my knees now, and so Can't my, see my niece right there, she's the one that takes me around in her car. You know, Ms. Boudreaux, uh, I'm interested to hear your facts, but I see those scooters on the road, and I get to pretty scared myself. They're pretty dangerous. Well, uh, I follow all the safety laws and I made sure that anybody with any kind of eyesight could see it from, from a mile away. I got it souped up by my nephew. You know, he's got bright colors on it and everything. It's even got a horn and a reflector. Excuse me. Uh, nobody uh, asked Mr. you, okay? You get your turn in a minute. Mr. Wimmer, I told you you would have an opportunity to speak. Did, did I not? I apologize. So if you would be respectful and wait your turn. That's the problem with young folk today. You ain't got no The plaintiff drives her scooter on the road like it's a car? Is that dangerous for other motorists? Find out what Justice Jackie has to say when we return. We're back with Cajun Court TV as the plaintiff continues to tell us this unbelievable story. Miss Boudreaux, did you have a helmet on your head? Yes, ma'am, I most certainly did. I have a nice Nice, fine helmet. I follow all the rules, just like I said. I promise. I know better. Well, sometimes I get scared when I see those scooters on the road. Yes, ma'am. And I see people driving just like 
just like they're on the road. So you're not like that, are no, you? No, ma'am, I and, am not. I took a driver safety course, and I got the paperwork to prove it if uh, you want to see it. Oh, so you follow all the rules. You got yes, your license and everything. Clearly yes, she don't follow all the rules because she was in the wrong, not me. Okay, I don't know why I'm here. Well, let's, let's we'll just we'll get to that in a minute. You just hold on right there. Now, you just hold it together, Mr. Wimbledon. I'm going to get to you, okay? And Ms. Boudreaux, just continue to tell me what happened. All right. So anyway, I'm riding around like, like I always do, saying hi to my neighbors and whatnot. And I come up to a four-way stop. And, and right in front of me is this little minivan. And he's got his blinker on. He's going to turn left at the four-way. And I'm right behind him, getting ready to make that same turn. And he, he goes on out in the intersection. And I look both ways like I'm supposed to. And as I'm going out in the intersection, I see this old pickup truck come swerving off from the other side. And then he straightens up and goes faster, accelerates, and nearly hits me. So I had to swerve out the way. And next thing she's I know, a, I'm careening down this embankment. Guy, like, you know you did wrong. You know you did wrong. She's losing her mind. I go down this embankment, and next thing I know, I come crashing right in, kapow, right into a tree. Everything on my scooter goes everywhere. Pieces flying everywhere. My, my, my helmet fell off. My wig fell off. My glasses fell off. Everything. I couldn't find nothing. And I'm, I'm staring up at the sky thinking, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm, I'm, this is it. I'm Why you got to bring Jesus? So you are blessed. You are blessed. Once I finally realized I, I wasn't dead, I was just a little dazed, I looked around and, and tried to figure out, you know, get my bearings. Like, where, where am I? What am I going to do? I had to get up out of that dish, so I looked over at my scooter, and luckily my, my cane right here was still attached to it. So I made my way over there and grabbed this cane and pulled myself up that hill as fast as I possibly could. To, and you to, had the strength to do that. Oh, yes, ma'am. I, 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 the Lord must have been with me that day because I, I got up that hill somehow with this That's cane. That's because she wasn't as hurt as she said. <sighs> you know what? You just need to be quiet over there. You don't know nothing about me or what ails me or nothing else. I hope that you are blessed with some good genes because when you get old, Whatever. you don't have Whatever. any control over what's going on with you. Okay, Ms. Boudreaux, and you are on a scooter because you have, uh, what is your medical condition? I, I have arthritis, most, mostly in my knees. That's why I don't drive no more. But, you know, I go work at the YMCA in the water, and I, I work on my upper body because that's all I got, you know, that, that works now. And so this cane comes in handy when I need to, you know, to get around a little bit. And that scooter sure comes in handy. But once I got up to the street and I could kind of see what was going on, I looked over there and I saw this fool screaming and hollering and throwing a tantrum like a little baby, screaming and hollering at the woman that he actually hit, and he hit her, and, and he's screaming the at I her. Hit her. Uh, Mr. You know the well, why were you screaming at the lady? You didn't even ask her if she was all right. Because my truck was damaged, and I was what mad. What does that have to do with the oh, well-being no. of another human being? How, who raised you, boy? Okay. Good Lord. We need a little cooperation here. Uh, I'll let you proceed a little farther. Thank you. Thank you, man. Justice Jackie needs more corroboration from the litigants. Stay tuned for more Cajun Court TV. The plaintiff continues with her interesting argument. So, he just got me so excited yelling at that girl and flailing his arms around and acting a fool and raising his voice to somebody that he done hurt. So I just had to go over there and, and take some action and I didn't know what else to do. So I just went over there and I just gave him a little, little tap on the head a with tap. my cane. No, you hit me. No, I, she's just, out of her I gave him a little mind. tap to get this him guy, back down to earth. How crazy That's all is this I woman did. is she's admitting that she came out to me cold blood. Oh, oh, and you better believe when I got over there and got close to him, I didn't have to get that close. I smell alcohol like a That's dog a on That's distillery a lie, over there. That's now, a lie, Miss. Miss Boudreaux, you had your cane and you hit him? You whacked him? Yes, ma'am, I surely did. And I should have hit her back. And, and where did but anyone you better be call? lucky I respect what? elderly women. Well, I'm glad somebody taught you something because you well, don't you know act right Mr. otherwise. Mr. Wimmerton, I'm glad you didn't retaliate. Thank you. Uh, that's admirable of you. Not to retaliate, but I want to hear more from Bujo. This is this is good and deep. You smell alcohol. I did. Just and I want you to make sure don't take the law in your own hand. So did the law enforcement officers come in one car? Well, yes, ma'am, they surely did. Okay, the police well, tell us what happened. Officers did sure come up there, and they found out that uh, they thought a little little uh, drinking had been going on. No, they did not. 
Oh, really? Let her finish. Let her finish. Well, then, uh, how come they put them silver bracelets on you then? They don't just give those to anybody. <laughs> oh. Okay. You got to do something special to get them silver bracelets. Know what I'm saying? And so I'm assuming that they arrested him. Yes, ma'am, they surely did. So what you got to say about that? Nothing. You quiet, quiet now, ain't you? Be mm -hmm. quiet. That's what I thought. Uh, I need you to have a little respect for the lady, okay? Hmm. So when the officers came, they arrested him. Yes, ma'am. Did they do a field sobriety test? Yes, ma'am, they sure did. And I'll need to hear a little bit about that. Uh, once yeah. that happened, they gave him a field sobriety test, mm -hmm. and they put those silver, what you call them, the silver Silver markers. bracelets, mm-hmm. Oh, okay, and they took him to jail. They took him to jail. So they must have found something wasn't quite right over there, or they wouldn't have done all that. They don't like to do that unless they have to. So, uh, yeah, they gave him a field sobriety test, and he flunked it with flying colors. No, I did not. That's not yes, true. Yes, he that's did. Not, that's okay. not true. Now, Mr. Wimbledon, I'd like to hear your version. I'd like to hear what you have to say about all of this. <laughs> Well, well now Scott. you can speak. <laughs> See, now he ain't got nothing to say. Like okay. I see. Now, Miss Boudreaux, now I, I had to respect you. So if you would give him the opportunity, I want to hear this. Yes, so ma'am. Yeah, I want to hear just it too. Just simmer your roll, just simmer down. Uh, Miss Scott, I was not drinking that morning. I was not drinking at all. Um, I got up, I was on my way to an interview, which I never made it to because mm -hmm. this crazy lady just popped up in front of my vehicle. She shouldn't have been on the highway anyway. She's in a 35 mile per hour street on a five mile per hour electric chair. Like well, she should have been on the sidewalk, but she was. I mean, she just came out. Ain't no law against me being well, on the road. I'm I like motorized you just was like drinking me. alcohol. Were you drinking? No, ma'am. I was not drinking that morning. You were not drinking that morning. No, ma'am. Uh, what happened? Well, the night before, I was at this bar, uh, you know, just enjoying myself the night before, and uh, I just I couldn't make it home, so I I, I just stayed there. You did what? I stayed. You know what? You know, you've been disrespectful to her. I need to hear your story. And let me tell you what. It's almost lunchtime. And I got some red beans and rice waiting on me. Ooh, yes. And, Mac, if you can order me some sausage. Now, if you get on with the story, I can just go on and help Miss Boudreaux out here, give her an award. I like and that. And we can be done with this. So I need you to get on with your story. Why is the defendant stalling with this story? Just as Jackie is ready to eat her red beans and rice. We'll be right back after the break. The plaintiff says young folks have no respect whatsoever, and she banged the defendant over the head with her cane. Stay tuned for more Cajun Court TV. I got up that morning. I got up right behind, the, I was at the alley, right behind the bar that I was at the previous night. Okay, just, just get to the story. Start from the beginning. Tell me what happened. Okay. He didn't rehearse this too good because he can't even get a live stream. See how he is? I know what's going on. Tell, tell us what happened. Uh, well, I woke up in the alley that morning after having a good... I enjoyed myself the night before, and uh, I went in. I got up, you, got you, in my truck. You woke truck. up in the alley, in an alley? Yes. Um, I like to enjoy myself, Miss Scott. I was drunk at that time. That's the night. I was drunk, but I slipped it off. You must have been having a really good time. Now, uh, you were that drunk, you had to sleep in the alley? Like I all said, night? I, all, yes. all night? I didn't want to risk getting on the uh, highway intoxicated, because I so like to follow the rules. you were out like a cold turkey. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I like to enjoy myself. In the alley? Yes, ma'am. Um, but I was not drunk when I got in my uh, vehicle um, the next morning. I got in my yeah, vehicle, I looked at the time, and I saw that my interview was coming up. I went. I was going home, I came up to this intersection, uh, I, was behind, I was behind this guy, he was texting and driving, he the one should be here, actually he the one who broke a law, uh, so I went past him. Oh, you a police officer all of a sudden. I looked behind me, I looked on the side of me, I didn't see anyone there, so I went around, and then this fool just came out and just was there and I, I, I swear it over I just came out and, and I was there, I just appeared you, out of nowhere. You, you, okay. uh, watch your mouth. Do not call her a fool. Okay, watch, watch yes, them out. Be respectful. Yes, ma'am. And when you got into your car, yeah. you were still drunk. No, ma'am. I was not drunk. I was not drunk. I was not drunk. I beg to differ, see, because I got a police report right here that says otherwise. I don't even care about those police reports. Well, you need the, to care about the police report. Anyway. Mac, Mac, I, I want to see that report. Mac, let me see that report, please. I got it right here. You know, when no, uh, 
Old Spice up there. It was more like old fashioned, some early times or something. Who you trying to fool slapping all that cologne on? It ain't covering up nothing. Now, Mr. Wimberton, it doesn't seem like you're being very honest. It says here that when the officers arrived at the scene, you did smell like alcohol. That's Very because, strong that's odor because I was of alcohol. The... Let me finish. Let me finish. That's right. And it says here that you took a field sobriety test and that alcohol test, it registered 0 .108. And that is well over the le legal limit, Mr. Wimbledon. What do you have to say about that? Miss Scott, I was not drunk. The reason they smelled alcohol on me is because when I was dancing with this beautiful young lady like yourself, um, oh. she spilled she spilled liquor on me, and that's the, and that and is that's far the fetch. Shit. You just need to fess up. That is far, far. I was not drunk. Well, she must have been very drunk too, but I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that you were drunk. That's why. I you were in that alley. You weren't drowsy. You weren't sleepy. You were drunk. Mm -hmm. She got you, and you sped off. You got up? I had to get to... You, I'm sorry? I had to get to an interview. You had to go to an interview? You slept all night and you were going to sit in somebody's face on an interview? I don't know That's who right. prepares for an interview like that. That must be what them uh, young millennials do in there nowadays. Nobody was talking to you. We're two well, different people. I, but you woke up drunk and you got into your vehicle. No, man, I went to sleep drunk. You went to sleep drunk? I woke up. I was sober. The defendant was not only over the limit on his sobriety test that morning, but he's also over the limit on lies that he's telling in mediation. Justice Jackie has heard enough. More to come after the commercial break. We're back in mediation as the defendant continues to tell his side of the story. Tell me more about this interview. I, I got in my vehicle. Um, the reason I sped off is because I was trying to get to that interview. Uh, I came up on the intersection, uh, like I told you, and this crazy lady just came out of nowhere, and she, she basically, she almost hit me. And I just, oh, I avoided her, so and I, I hit a, a Apparently, a I'm way. a magician, and I almost hit you in my little five-mile-an-hour scooter, as you say, and you coming around in a pickup truck. Now, what is wrong with this picture? Like you I said, Miss Scott, I was, on, I, was, I was in a rush, and I looked. I looked both ways, behind me, in front of me. She wasn't there. She just appeared. Poof. Uh, no stop signs? She didn't stop? So you didn't see her? She should have saw me. You, you, you I was speeding. It don't matter mm -hmm. what I'm doing. There's a stop sign there for a reason. And that's it. I want to know if it's a residential area. Yes, ma'am. It is a residential area. A lot of old folks around there. A lot of retired yeah. folks around there. Okay. So you read the rules about driving. You didn't get a ticket that day. No, ma'am. I did not. No, ma'am. Police did not have no problem with what I was doing. No problem Just had a problem with Mr. Sleep in the Alley over here. Yes, ma'am. I'm assuming that you missed that interview. Unfortunately, I really needed that job. You know what, Mr. Wimbledon? It seems like you have more than an anger problem. I, I paid attention to you. It seems like you also have an alcohol problem. No, ma'am, I don't. I just like to enjoy myself. And I believe, all say. I believe Ms. Boudreaux. I believe you went to the club, you drank too much, and you were rushing to an interview, you wasn't paying attention, trying to get a job. I don't believe you'd get that job anyway. At uh, point one zero eight, they probably would smell your breath. You wouldn't get that job. I was just a little drowsy. That's, all. <laughs> That's crazy to me. You, you're talking crazy to me. But anyway, you got a DUI. You were drunk. Now, the other driver is it's booed drunk. Was she seriously hurt? No, thank, oh. thank Lord she wasn't seriously hurt, but she was so shook up and it didn't help that he was screaming in her face like a maniac either. <sighs> but, but she was okay. We was all okay that day. Just a little shaking up. Now Except this, for my scooter, of course. Uh, you need to get a car. You know what? You need to find a driver because that don't need to happen again. Well, okay. You need to get a I job, don't you? you? But you, you can't stay I, out the club long enough to do that. Now, it's a thin line between drinking, you know, and, and driving, and, and being put in some of those silver bracelets, okay? And I don't agree with you, Ms. Boudreaux. Now, thank you, thank you, you. you can't thank take, you. Uh, excuse me, you can't take the law into your own hands. 
Now that arthritis, now you were lucky, you you know, you know the Lord said He take care of fools and babies. Mm -hmm. You know the Lord take care. That's that's all we're saying. He take care of fools and babies. Now Mr. Wimbledon with his attitude could have really gone off on you. Mm -hmm. So next time, just wait for the officers, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Wimbledon, do you have any uh, medical bills? Yes, ma'am, I do. And may I see those, Mac? Let me see those, please. I got a good whack in on them, though. <laughs> you got one more time. One more time. Uh, you ain't that far away. There won't be okay, any of that in here. You're going to respect this lady. There won't be. You, 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 better cool you better cool it. You better cool it. Now, it says here you went to the doctor. Oh, my, $50. I tell you what. You asked me to help you out here? Yes, ma'am. I tell you what. You asked for $20. $500 exactly. for your vehicle. And I'm wondering why you didn't submit it to your insurance company. Probably because you may have had that drinking problem. <laughs> that may have been a problem for you. But I tell you what, I am going to, to attract $50. What? $50 for You're gonna make your me medical pay this man Hold on, me? let me finish. You're the problem. You caused this problem. Get into your car, sleeping in the alley all night, drunk, and you shrug. She had to shrug. To, but that had to, nothing to do I with it. I tell you what, $1,950 for Ms. Boudreaux, the plaintiff. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, And I Ms. tell Scott. you what, Ms. Boudreaux, I think you've learned something as well. Now, you said you follow the rules. There are rules and regulations for those scooters. Yes, ma'am. And I'm glad to hear that you followed those yes, rules. Yes, ma'am. Now, Mr. Wilmington, please get some help for your anger as well as that drinking problem you may have. Okay? Be careful about sleeping in the alley. That's my mediation. Well, I am very pleased, very pleased indeed. Miss Scott was very fair. She listened to what I had to say, and the facts stood on their own, so I think everything came out just the way it was supposed to. Thank you, Miss Scott, and thank you, God, for this lovely day. Well, I definitely got the short end of the stick. I have a truck <laughs> that's damaged just because of this crazy lady right here, um, but it's the law. I think you crazy. I think you need to check out what crazy means in the dictionary. Well, we'll okay? see when we step outside. Uh -huh. I got something for you right here. You want some more? I'm gonna give a big hug. <laughs> <laughs>